How's it going today, everyone? Good, how are you? Very good, thank you. Glad everyone could join us today. Yeah, thanks for having this, EJ. Yeah. Coach Duffy should be on in a couple minutes, followed by Lauren Van Clunen, Selena Lott, and then Jordan King. All right, Coach Duffy will be joining us in just a minute. Ben, how you doing today? I'm good, man. Just got back from my coronavirus test, fingers crossed. No doubt. First one I've ever taken. Good to hear. What's up, everyone? Hey, Coach. Okay. Morning, afternoon. I don't know what day or time it is anymore. <laughs> It is the morning time still. All right, EJ, thanks. Keeping me together. <laughs> <laughs> of course. All right, we are going to get rolling then with Coach Duffy. Team's coming off a 24-8 and eight season last year in year one under Coach. Runner-up finish in the Big East. And uh, the season is uh, set to hopefully get underway here in the, in the next couple weeks. So, uh, Ben, if you want to start us off with a question. Yeah, you guys have been practicing again for about a week since your 14-day uh, quarantine. How's the team look since you've been back? Hey, Ben. Hey, everyone. Thanks for being patient with us. I know we've had a, a lot going on the last uh, couple weeks and just even our traditional way of doing media and giving you uh, tidbits and catch-up sessions. You know, I just even think back a couple weeks ago to the biggest media day. It all, it all looks different. So just as we navigate through just a lot of new challenges and, and I just put in quotes stuff, um, we appreciate you guys still supporting us and, you know, um, just being flexible with changing things up. You know, Ben, it's, it's been uh, interesting. You know, the 14-day the quarantine was definitely a challenge. Uh, we all knew, I think every coach across the country knows it could happen and probably will happen at some point. Um, but then it happens and you, you kind of like, all right, let's, let's get a, a, a plan together based on uh, your – you know, where you're at in your season, how many practices you've had. Um, I felt like we were, we had some good momentum after the first, you know, really seven, eight days of practice. And then you kind of come to a halt, uh, you know, being back on the court now, um, we've had to keep things probably a little more simple. Um, we've had to, instead of maybe implementing a lot more that we would at this point in the season, uh, take a few steps back. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. We just have to kind of meet, um, you know, meet where the team is. And the phenomenal thing about all this is how hard this team is working to try and stay in shape, to try and get their timing back. Uh, we have moments of some ugly basketball uh, and you just try and keep bringing them the energy and know at some point, you know, that stuff's going to get cleaned up and, you know, those, those turnovers or, you know, missed layups or whatever it is that happens in basketball will eventually continue to improve. All right, uh, Stephanie Sutton has a question. Coach, can you hear me okay? Yeah, I got you, thanks. Okay, great. Well, first of all, I think since we last talked to you, um, it came out that both the men's and women's program will not have fans in the stands. You know, your thoughts on that and how that's gonna affect maybe how your young women play. Yeah, I think we were, um, you know, just kind of waiting to see what that final decision would be. And, and ultimately with the COVID numbers in our area and uh, the limitations on public gatherings, um, we knew that was going to be a potential possibility that I wouldn't have fans. Uh, you know, it's going to be different around the country. When you walk into certain buildings, there might be some fans. And then obviously in other places, there, there might be uh, just the, the two teams playing, referees and, you know, essential personnel. Uh, we've talked about finding ways to create more energy within our team. Because, uh, you know, whether you're on the road or at home, you, you get a certain kind of bounce to yourself, whether that's from, you know, we have the best band in the land giving us energy with our cheerleaders, uh, just our, our obviously regular fan base. Um, so we're going to have to find a way to not have it feel just like practice or showing up for practice and make it feel like some sort of a true um, game like feel. And then you equally have to be ready to, to bounce on the road and play in front of a couple thousand. Who knows? So, um, we hope our fans will kind of hang in there with us and I know we're going to reassess it and after the first of the year and kind of see where we're at um, with being able to have more people in there. 
All right, John Leuzzi, Marquette Wire, has a question. Hey, Coach, hope you're all doing well. Um, I know you spoke briefly about Jordan King and Big East Media Day. What are you looking forward to her out in her sophomore season, and how have you seen her grow as a leader on this team? Hey, John, yeah, thanks for the question. Well, most of you guys saw Jordan last year. I, I made her play, you know, point guard as a freshman trying to run the show, and all that comes with it, and there were definitely some, some challenges, but I thought overall she had a heck of a first year. Probably the biggest difference I think you'll see with Jordan King moving from freshman year to sophomore year is her confidence in her scoring ability. Um, you know, her shooting percentage and numbers in practice are significantly higher. Uh, and I think that's a little bit of just settling into our, our system and our style. We've also uh, moved her off the ball a little bit. So we'll see her um, play, obviously still at some point, but move over to that wing spot where we can get her out in transition you know, similar to how we use Celine a lot and give her just different opportunities to, to score. Um, she's been phenomenal as a, as a leader, helping the freshmen uh, in their new roles uh, and just, you know, continues to uh, embrace every challenge I give her. We really look forward uh, to seeing that sophomore season for her. Thanks, Coach. All right, Zoe, any question you have for Coach? Yeah, Coach, obviously um, with both men's and women's basketball being given that eligibility an extra year for seniors, kind of what were your initial reactions to that? Well, I think we were all a little surprised. Uh, there was a lot of talk with, with all sports, fall, winter, and spring, that there's potential with the, the pandemic that every student athlete was going to get a year back. I honestly thought that they might wait to the end of the basketball season to kind of make that call. And it was interesting. We learned that at the first official day of practice that there was potential for everybody to get their extra year uh, obviously, with this year unknown with how many games we're going to play, the stop, the stoppage potentially that could happen. They wanted to give the advantage to the student athletes to gain that extra year. And it's it funny, I told, um, I told Lauren and Selena, I said, guys, I want to keep you for like eight to 10 years. So, if, you know, we got a chance to, you know, keep you in college. And I was like, you guys don't want to go into the real world anyway. You know, I said, um, you know, so we, we've, we've definitely talked about it. Everybody's in the know. And it'll be interesting as, as you know, things move forward year to year, how that affects our roster. Um, you know, we're also going to, at some point, they're probably going to pass the one-time transfer rule. Um, with men's and women's basketball too, which will be a whole different dynamic, um, you know, as we navigate through a pandemic. So more, more, uh, more interesting news, I guess, in the basketball world. All right. Uh, Kristen has a question. Hi, coach. Um, so with some top recruits coming into your first year class for 2020, what are you looking for in terms of success and skill to help build your program? Good question. Yeah. Re recruitings are, are, our lifeline and, you know, our, our new freshmen this season, Juliana Okuson, Liza Carlin, Rose Nakumu, and Danielle Middleton bring definitely a different dynamic. They're, they're all very different players. And, you know, they've had the disadvantage a little bit this season with um, not having the full summer school sessions to kind of get them acclimated to college basketball in our system. Um, and, you know, obviously with the stop and starters that we've had already, it's, it's been even more of a challenging year for them. But the future for what their careers can look like is, is going to be awesome. They're versatile. They're great kids. They work extremely hard. And now it's a little bit of just getting some, some college basketball experience. And I know they want to rush this process way more um, than we can right now. And, you know, they're looking forward to games and they're, they're like, what's it going to be like? And I say, well, in a normal year, it usually looks like this, but we're in definitely a very, very different year. Uh, we had a great day yesterday, um, signing two from the class of 2021, uh, two players in Micaiah and Kendra that will fill, fill great needs for us. Uh, again, versatile players. We got some size again at that wing position. And then Kendra Gillespie is an interesting um, player with what she can do. She can be a flat out bruiser inside. Uh, and then you can see her on the perimeter where she's a terrific passer. Um, she's going to be great off our pick and roll game. She can shoot the three. And, you know, just even a, a kid as we kind of expand our recruiting base, you know, a kid from Oklahoma, which we've, you know, haven't really had before. So great day for us yesterday, uh, just having those kids officially part of the Marquette family. Thanks, we'll go back. Well, sorry about that. We'll go back to Stephanie for another question. Hey, Coach, I know your schedule is still in the works, but what do you know about it so far and what do you like about it so far game-wise? 
whew, this actually, we, we talk about the pandemic. This has been probably the hardest challenge for Coach Duffy, talking in third person here, is just our schedule. And, you know, we're used to, as coaches, knowing our schedule last year. And while sometimes we don't release to the public, we know exactly where we're going, who we're playing, um, the perfect balance of how to navigate through that, through the kids' finals, and you know a lot of a lot of things. Getting that perfect RPI, we were supposed to go to the um, inaugural battle for Atlantis tournament for the women's side and play Oregon and potentially South Carolina, and just a, an incredible field. And that kind of all went up in flames a little bit with just you know the the COVID changes. We're still working on a, a couple things with our games, and it's more just to get the contracts right with COVID terminology and you know we're going to try and play four to five non-conference games um, sprinkle them in around finals and then as you guys saw the biggies came out with an initial four game um, intro to I guess the bigger picture of the season where we're going to play four games before that that Christmas um, holiday I, I like what it looks like um, you know it's it's different than some of the opponents we were originally but we're going to try and play some local opponents to keep the health and safety um, with the pandemic first and foremost. And uh, I've always been big on non-conferences. You wanna play different styles that are gonna prepare you for the Big East. Now this year, it's a little bit of all, everything's intertwined. And I know uh, I'm really anxious to see what January and February of the Big East schedule looks like. Uh, it sounds like we're gonna you know, play a midweek game and a weekend game. And you know, just, to, just to see when you play UConn and DePaul and, and some of those ones you circle on the, on the calendar will be, will be exciting. All right, we'll go to Sam Arco from the Marquette Wire. Hey, Coach. You had a very young team last season and ended up working really well for you guys. So you have another young team this year. So how do you replicate that success this season? I, I sometimes forget how young we are. Uh, when you, we throw four new freshmen in and we still have five sophomores and really obviously with Selena and Louie, just, just a couple seniors. Uh, but because they're playing so many minutes and they're, they're so important to the success of our team, uh, I probably treat them like juniors and seniors too much. Uh, but yeah, there, there's some learning curve still with just, you know, the grind of a college season. And then you throw in what we're kind of going through now where, you know, your training looks totally different than years in the past. Your preparation looks different. Uh, it's going to test our young team. And I don't know when that is. Right now it has. Um, we'll probably feel it again at, you know, December, January, and February. There's always going to be moments that we have to just rely on, you know, trust the, the confidence of your game, you know, be ready when your number's called. It's just some interesting, uh, I guess, slogan and terminology we're kind of using. Um, there's such a progression usually from preseason into early con non-conference play into conference. And, uh, you know, all I can say is it looks extremely different and you're doing it with a lot of underclassmen. So um, we're going to do our best to, to manage it, handle it. The other thing I think that people overlook is how important it is to keep our teams healthy this season with all the stop and startage. Everybody's focused on COVID so much, which is obviously super important. But as athletes in their bodies, you know, the stopping and starting and, you know, the, the travel and you're condensing a, a lot of games into a small amount of time. We'll play more games if all goes well um, in, a, in an extremely short amount of time. So that's actually as us coaches talk um, kind of around the country, it's like, how do we find that perfect balance of keeping them physically and mentally healthy, uh, especially with the young team, but, but just how their schedules are. It's, it's not normal. And um, we're trying to, to do the best we can with, with giving them their, their breaks, but, you know, pushing them, you know, that right amount uh, to keep them moving forward. All right, back to Ben Steele with another question. You know, Selena was voted uh, All Big East during media day. What have you talked with her about what success looks like for her this season? Yeah, I, I think she's putting some high expectations on her on her shoulder. And, and Ben, last year was really interesting because it was really the first year that obviously she had the spotlight on her. She was one of those secondary players for a couple of years, really good defensively, was on the court. But that's a little bit different than, you know, playing 38 minutes a night. Um, trying to you know guard the other team's best player and then still score for our team. So I think she learned a lot about how to take care of her body, how to handle her emotions with it. Uh, I said this at Big East Media Day, but I think the biggest change that I've seen with Selena is just her willingness to do whatever this team needs. 
Um, there's moments in practice where I'll give her just a little cue of like, hey, this is your time to kind of take over and work on that. Um, and she, she looks me in the eye and says, I got you, coach. And then the next day at practice, she'll have 13 assists and one turnover. So her versatility has been, always been her greatest strength. And she's evolving into uh, just this confident player that can handle it. Um, and I look at even the adversity we've had so far. She's been steady helping the, the freshmen out and our sophomore group, group out. And um, we're going we're gonna to have to rely on her a lot again this year. All right, just two more questions for Coach. Uh, we'll go to Andrew now. Hey, hey Coach. Um, so we were just talking about your young team. So who do you see filling into the two starting roles now that Altia and Nizzi um, are not here? Well, I got to be honest, I'm still figuring it out as we finally get to practice a little bit more. But, yeah, I, I think we'll, we'll do some different lineups. Um, you know, trying to incorporate the young kids. I really like um, Chloe Murata who's one of our upperclassmen now who, you know, we used her a decent amount in, inside. And this year we're, we're trying to move her out to the perimeter at that guard spot a little bit more and kind of be that true tweener that can play inside and outside. Uh, you know, the other group and kind of that sophomore class that has really showed some, some great promises, Claire Kafis um, has filled into Izzy's role in some ways of being able to shoot the basketball and stretch defenses and, and then um, Taylor Valade is another one who is going to help us with time at the point guard position um, so we can kind of maybe shift Jordan King around a little bit more. So um, it's a little bit still with rotations up in the air. And I think it'll be like that. Usually we're pretty set by now going into, you know, two weeks left before games start. But I think the way things have unfolded with the quarantine and, you know, trying to keep them healthy and we're going to, you know, obviously rely on a, a lot of bodies, um, probably different every night to, to, get what we want accomplished. All right, last question. We'll go to Molly Gretzlock. Hey, Coach. So um, regarding the Big East change of the tournament, I kind of wanted to ask what your take is on how you feel about that and how you think that will affect players that are used to it being in Chicago. I think it's a great opportunity for women's basketball. At the end of the day, no matter if you put it out in California or New York City or at Wintrust or – you know, at Mohegan, we, we want fans, we want a big crowd, we want an atmosphere. I've been somebody, you know, when I played in Notre Dame, you know, we always had it out uh, in Connecticut and you had to fight the, the Husky fans and all that goes into it. And it was fun. It was an awesome environment. You know, a lot of teams came in from all over to, to watch some great basketball. And that was the intention when we decided to, as a league, move it um, out of the Midwest over, you know, back into uh, Connecticut territory when they came into the league. So we're looking forward to it. I think the, the more you can have um, a packed crowd, it'll be a little bit harder, you know, when you have to play Connecticut. Again, it'll feel like maybe a home court advantage for them, but it'll definitely feel like a tournament atmosphere and, and kind of a, a cool vibe that will hopefully enhance, um, enhance the league again. All right. Thanks so much, Coach. Appreciate your time today. All right, guys. I'm sure we'll do this again. Thanks for all your support and help during this and patience again. I know, I know everybody's world is, is rocked in different ways. So, you know, keep preaching the good word and having fun with whatever you guys are doing. All right. We'll do the same over here. All right. So up next, we're going to have Lauren Van Clunen. So Lauren is a redshirt senior who had a breakout junior season, averaging 11.8 points and 5.9 rebounds last year. Lauren, are you with us now? Yeah, I'm here. All right. So if anyone has any questions um, right away for Lauren, uh, I'll have you either put it in the chat or you can raise your hand just like you did for Coach. We'll start with uh, Ben Steele for your first question for Lauren. Hey, Lauren, how you doing? Good, how are you? Good, good, good. Uh, you know, you guys have been back in practice for about a week since you had that 14-day break. Just what did you do during that, that, that pause just to stay connected to the team? And then second part of that, how did you feel once you got back on the court? Were you a little rusty? Um, yeah, so we just did a lot of, in terms of like Zoom workouts, just getting back with the team, staying connected, um, different team activities too, just trying to stay, you know, keeping busy um, and being aware of, you know, how our bodies are doing. And I think honestly, when we got back, it was a, a, it was 
in terms of uh, just getting back and getting in the swing of things, yeah, the first day is always a little rough, but it's just keep grinding every day. And I think, you know, it's really fun after, you know, a two week layoff to be able to get back on the court and, um, and get back with your teammates. So it was definitely a lot of fun to, to do that and get back rolling with things. All right, now we'll go to John Leuzzi. Hi, Lauren. How are you doing? My question for you is, have you given any advice to Jordan King of what to expect from making the jump from freshman year to sophomore year and any advice maybe during the off season of training for that jump? Yeah, I think, um, you know, uh, going from freshman to sophomore year, um, it's different. You know, you're kind of feeling things out your freshman year, trying to see what what's going on, trying to get everything right. And then your sophomore year, you, you, you know, you, um, you've been here, you've played, you've experienced a lot of different things. And I think that freshman year for Jordan was, was great just from a learning experience and just taking, she was in every situation possible for in, in whatever game we were in and understand as that point guard position, um, you know, she did a phenomenal job. I think just one of the big things I always tell her is uh, keep her confidence. You know, she's, She's honestly with the game she was in and the amount she played, she, in my eyes, almost like a veteran. Um, so she just stayed with that confidence, used her voice as a, as being a leader. I think that's huge. Um, and trust what she's um, saying because she knows all the right things, does the right thing. So I think that's just my big thing to her, to keep on leading by example and leading with that voice. All right, we'll go to Zoe. Hi, Lauren. Hope you're doing well. So obviously you already took that um, red shirt year, but kind of what was your initial reaction to, you know, winter sports athletes getting that extra year of eligibility? Yeah, you know, initially, I think in terms of, um, you know, having the possible sixth year, I think it's always great to, you know, have that chance to come back to Marquette and play again. And I think that's, um, you know, a great opportunity. The fact that the NCAA grand that, I think that's huge. Um, and I think it also in terms of just, kind of takes the pressure off from a standpoint of there's so much unknown about the season. And I think it's just, you can take it one day at a time and, and um, not have to worry about the long road. How many games are we going to play? When are we going to put like, it's just more so just like play, playing free. You don't have to worry about it. If the, the chance that I get to come back is, is huge. And obviously I, I love putting on the Marquette uniform, the pride I have for this university. So to be able to come back uh, and have, a, have another chance at it would be, um, is, is great. We'll go back to Ben Steele. Uh, no fans at games for at least through 2020. Uh, we asked Coach Duffy about it, but as a player, what do you think that's going to be like for you guys? Yeah, I think it's going to be different. I mean, you see it kind of all over the place with sports um, going on now, whether that's in football or even with the bubble with basketball. I think it's obviously going to be a little bit of a change. You're, you're used to it a little bit with all the fans then. And um, even previous years, how many fans we got at our games. But I think that's a it's a time for us to to bring our own energy. And you know, I think it'd be honestly a unique case to see on the court from the standpoint of the players, just how much we're talking, how much we're communicating, what's being said on the court. Um, will be kind of a unique insight, I think, especially for women's basketball. So it's going to be uh, it'll be different for sure. But I think it's going to be uh, you know great for our team to be able to bring that energy every single day and every single game night. Sam Marco, go ahead. Hey, Lauren. As a veteran on this team, have you developed any leadership role for many of the younger players on the team? Yeah, I just try to be, uh, whether that's lead by example and lead by my voice, kind of what I was saying about with Jordan. Um, one of our big things on our team is anyone can be a leader. It doesn't matter your age, your class. Um, I think that's one of the big things we pride ourselves on as a team. So just being able to do that, I think I've been through a bunch of different experiences. So just, um, you know, telling people about it was something that I experienced this way or something maybe that worked this way. Just finding different um, niches almost just to help them in any way possible. And, and you know, if they're, whether it's, you know, dealing with something off the court, on the court, um, just helping them in any way possible, I think, is, is what I'm trying to be for, for the girls um, in any way. We will go to Andrew with a question. Hey, Lawrence. Um, last year, you guys um, had that underdog mentality, and uh, that was pretty much after you guys were picked to finish ninth in the Big East in the preseason poll. But now this year is a lot different. So um, can you just talk about how you plan to maintain your success from last season now that you guys are expected to be one of the top teams in the conference? 
Yeah, I think a little bit, you know, even though when those polls came out, we, we had that underdog mentality. I think the same is true this year. Um, you know, we're still, we are picked third um, and we're going to take it and run with it um, as if, you know, we were picked ninth. So it, I think to us, it's just the keep, keep coming to practice and grinding every day and getting better. How can we get better? How can we keep that Marquette standard um, each and every day? And I think, you know, Mar Marquette's been on the map for a long time and how do we keep um, Marquette up there, I think is, is big for this group. All right. Any last questions that people want to ask Lauren before we let her go? Looks like Molly Gretzlock has a question. Molly, go ahead. Yeah, I guess I'll go out same off what I asked coach. So being acclimated to playing in Chicago for the Big East tournament, how do you feel about it getting switched over to Connecticut? Yeah, I think, uh, you know, Chicago is, um, the winter is an amazing venue. Um, so being able to play there, the amount of fans that we had, even able, being able to travel down from Marquette, um, just the Marquette faithful as usual. Um, but I think, you know, going out to Connecticut, uh, I've never been, so it's going to be pretty cool to, to experience that. And um, the Mohegan Sun Arena is beautiful. Just watching, I'm even a uh, fellow uh, women's basketball alumni, Natisha Heidemann, play there, just how beautiful it was. So it's going to be awesome. I understand they get a bunch of fans too, regardless if it's UConn or, or whatever team, they just love their basketball out there. And I think also Marquette Faithful will come, come that way too. So it'll be, it'll be great if, um, to be able to play out there. All right, awesome. Thanks so much for your time today, Lauren. Appreciate it. All right, it. thanks, thanks, EJ. Thank you guys, have a good day. All right, up next, we're gonna have Selena Lott. So Selena Lott was all Big East last year. She led the team in scoring with almost 16 points a game. And she was named to the preseason all Big East first team this year in the Big East media day. So Selena will be joining us in just one second. All right, Selena, how are you? Good, how are you? Very good, thanks. We, uh, have a couple questions, people lined up, ready to ask. So we'll, we'll start with Ben Steele. Ben, go ahead. Hey, Selena, good to see you. Hello. Uh, you know, you're named to the All Big East team at Media Day. Uh, last year, you seemed to thrive in a bigger role. Um, how do you kind of capitalize on that success and keep it going this season? What, what are you expecting th this season? Yeah, um, I'm not really expecting much. I'm just looking for my like for my teammates to get me better and for me to get my teammates better. All right, we'll go to Andrew. Hey, Selena. So well, I, I asked this to Lauren, um, but you know, last year you guys carried that underdog mentality after you were picked ninth um, to finish ninth, but now this year it's a lot different. So. Um, can you just talk about how you plan to maintain your success from last year into this season now that you guys are um, looked at as one of the top teams in the conference? Yeah, um, I think we still have to have a chip on our shoulder. Like that grit that we always have, I think that's what makes us succeed. All right, now we'll go to Stephanie Sutton. Hey, Selena, just talk a little bit about, I guess, sort of the craziness of all this. I mean, you've played basketball for a long time in this year and the pandemic and what's going on and the unknowns just describe some of your emotions your feelings as you head into this season yeah um at first I think the most difficult thing was the mask I think that was like our biggest challenge like how to push through it and um it's definitely a roller coaster because when we have to go into quarantine that's also like not very fun but it's also you have to have that mindset you just want to get back and be ready to play. All right, we'll go to John Liuzzi. Hey, Selena, it seemed like last year um, your connection and relationship with Jordan King was really strong, um, and you, she learned a lot from you. H have there been any pieces of advice that you've given to her from the jump from freshman year to sophomore year, and how have you seen that uh, be put to action in practice so far? Yeah, um, I just think – Jordan knows that she's one of the best players, like, in the league. So I always tell her, like, you can't have a bad day. Like, you can have a bad day, but you can't just fold whenever you want. So I think just always bringing her up and 
having that off the court chemistry too helps on the court. All right, we'll go to Zoe. Um, hi, Selena. So obviously with that extra year of eligibility announced for winter sport athletes, kind of what was your initial reaction and are you planning on taking that? Yeah, that me and Louie both looked at each other when we saw the ESPN notification and we were like, whoa, what to do now? So coach called us in the office and then we just kind of talked about it, but we're still focused on this season. So not really worried about next year yet. All right, Sam Arco. Hey, Selena, as one of the only seniors on the team, what advice have you been giving some of the younger players on the team? That it's going to be tough. And nobody has been through this, like, challenging with the corona. So you just have to keep your positive mindset to keep pushing through. It's going to get better eventually. We just don't know when. Ben Steele. Has it been a big change in the Big East with UConn coming in this year? Um, are you excited about, you know, playing against one of the, you know, the perennial powerhouses? And, and Wait, sorry, can you repeat that? Uh, just with UConn, are you, how excited are you to play against, you know, one of the year in, year out powerhouses of women's basketball? Yeah, um, I think we're super excited. It's obviously a lot better competition. So I just think it's better on our end to just play against the best players. Shane Hogan. Hey, Selena. So yeah. you and Lauren, uh, you know, you guys have been through a lot with this program, a coaching change. You know, the conference is changing. Locations are changing. How do you guys just stay focused on, on your goals of, you know, getting back to the top of this conference? Wait, sorry. Can you say that again? My internet broke. Oh, yeah. Sorry. Um, you know, you and Lauren, the, the program has kind of changed a little bit since you guys have been here, a coaching change, the conference is changing. How do you guys just, you know, stay focused on, on what you want to accomplish? Yeah, I just think um, games are like the biggest thing right now. In practices, we take it day by day. So I think we just have to focus on getting ourselves better and the preparation, I feel like, will succeed from that. All right. Anyone have any last questions we want to ask Selena? Go ahead. I'll give you a couple seconds to raise your hand in the chat or message me. All right, Selena, you are good to go. Thanks so much for joining us here today. Thank you, guys. Appreciate it. All right, then Jordan King will be our next one on. She'll be joining us here in a couple seconds. So we'll just give her a minute. So Jordan King is a sophomore guard. She started all 32 games last year, averaged eight points per game. And she's one of three returning starters for the team along with Lauren and Selena. All right, Jordan King is joining us now. So same thing as the last couple. If you have a question, make sure to raise your hand or message me. Jordan, how's it going today? I'm doing good, how are you? Very good, very good, thanks. We have a, a couple questions lined up for you uh, when, whenever you're ready. So we're gonna start with Ben Steele. Hey Jordan, good to see you. Hey. Uh, Coach Duffy talked a little bit about how she put a lot on your, your plate freshman year. Uh, just what did you learn from that experience and how do you take that and build off of that heading into your, your sophomore season? 
I think last year was a great learning experience for me in uh, several ways. And I think just day in and day out, there was something I learned new each day. And I can see that translating already in practices this year. So I'm just super excited to see, um, you know, how my one year of experience is already going to make an impact on this second year. We'll go to Kristen with the next question. Hi, Jordan. So just coming off like a really great first year and then you and the sophomores like stepping up and knowing that they're yet you guys are a young team. How do you feel that you and the underclassmen uh, are going to, how do you feel that you guys are going to be able to step up and produce day in and day out? Yeah, I think, you know, our group is, is huge part of our team. And I think I'm just really proud of all of us right now, how confident we're playing and, you know, the way that we developed over the summer. And I mean, even last year too. So I think we're just going to be a really big part of the team in different ways. Um, regarding leadership, um, different positions, obviously, and just different things we all bring to the table. You know, we're all different players in our own ways. And I think, um, like I said, leadership is going to be a big part. And obviously, just the way that each and every one of us plays and what we bring to the table is huge. All right, we'll go to John for the next question. Hey, Jordan, you're just one of two P players from last year's team that played all 32 games. What did, um, you also have a really strong and close relationship with Selena Lott. What were some of the big things that you learned from her last year when she almost took you under her wing a little bit? I think one of the things that I learned and I think a lot of the younger players can learn too is her competitiveness. And I think that shows, uh, you know, every day in practice and I think in games as well. Um, so I think that's just something that's super important in college basketball is being competitive day in and day out with every drill, every game. So I think that was one of the biggest things that I learned from her last year. And, you know, I'm just looking forward to, you know, keep learning from our seniors. We'll go back to Ben Steele. Uh, you guys are coming off that recent 14-day pause. Uh, just what did you do to kind of keep yourself, you know, physically and mentally sharp during that time? You know, our team stayed strong together. We had a lot of Zoom calls, and um, I think that's a big part is going through adversity together. And I think that's something that really helped me is knowing I had, you know, my 12 other teammates, everybody on the coaching staff um, there with us. And I just think the, the way that we were able to connect still being apart was, was really big. And, you know, it's going to help us. We'll go back to John with another question. During quarantine, obviously, you had restrictions of not being able to go out and work out at courts a lot. But what was something that you worked on during the months off uh, in preparation for a big season? Um, are you talking about like over the summer? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so once things were, you know, kind of opening up on my end back in Illinois around uh, July, I was able to get in with my trainer and just, um, you know, lock back into my game and, you know, just get that confidence back with my shot, my ball handling. So I would just say just kind of getting back into the flow of things. I mean, it's hard to take, you know, months off like that away from, you know, basketball especially. Um, but I think it was just really important that once, you know, we had the resources back available just to lock back in and get refocused and you know head into this this season with a, a positive mindset. Sam Arco, go ahead. Hey Jordan, you had a very important role last season even when you were one of the youngest on the team. So what advice do you have for some of the freshmen this season? Um, I would say just you know keep an open mindset. You know you can learn every single day whether that's from your teammates, your coaches, even your, your own classmates, um, is really important to just have a, an open mindset and be willing to learn, be being coachable. And I think that's one of the biggest things that will make, make a successful player is if you can just take in everything that, you know, people are trying to teach you. And so I think that's something that, um, you know, I've been trying to help the freshmen out as well, just being coachable every day. Zoe, go um, ahead. I, hi, Jordan. Oh, nice to see you. So obviously being from Illinois, um, I'm UConn is coming back to the conference and the tournament is now at Mohegan Sun. Kind of what does that mean? I mean, for the state of Big East basketball? I think it's a huge, um, you know, opportunity for us to play against some of the best players, you know, in the nation as, as UConn comes into the Big East. And I think it's just 
um, a really ex exciting opportunity that we're all ready for and, you know, preparing for. We'll go to Stephanie. Yeah, my question is, um, Selena kind of pointed it out, or maybe it was you, I can't remember, the, the mass. How difficult is that to play a sport in, on the college level and wear a mask while you're playing or practicing? Yeah, it was challenging at first, but, um, you know, we all, you know, tried as best as we could to adapt to it. And, you know, we're all going through it. So it's not just like it's one player, but yeah, it was, it was challenging at first, but, you know, we got through it and, you know, we, not, we know we're not the only team going through it. Are you kind of in the mentality, if this is what's going to take for us to play, we'll do just about anything when it comes to the protocols? That's, that's how you have to, you have to think you, you know, you got to be grateful the opportunities that you have and whatever is, you know, thrown your way, you gotta, you gotta take it and run with it. So I think, you know, especially um, this year, this season, it, it's going to be that mindset every day and, and things can change. All right, a couple more for Jordan. Uh, Shane Hogan, go ahead. Hey, Jordan. Um, obviously, you know, the last time you guys were on a court was that Big East title game and, um, you know, didn't end the way you guys wanted. And then all of a sudden, you know, everything changed. So, um, you know, you didn't get to the tournament. Um, you guys, you know, were on your way there. How do you put that stuff behind you um, and really just put that whole year behind? I mean, you guys accomplished a lot as a program, um, but, you know, I'm sure the mindset right now is we got to start looking forward. Um, you know, how, how, do you, how do you carry that mindset out? The computer's frozen right now. It, new goals to accomplish, so. Jordan, can you, I'm sorry, can you just repeat that answer again? I think the computer froze up. Oh. Technology, wonderful. <laughs> did you guys hear that or was it only me that didn't? No, I didn't either. No. Okay. Uh, uh, so I was just saying that um, <clears throat> basically, I mean, we're with a, a new group of girls, a, a new set of 13. And so it's, it's a fresh season. It's a fresh start with, you know, some of the, the um, incomers. But obviously we do have our returners and we're just trying to build on what we, you know, created last year and just keep going strong. But I think, you know, you can't really focus on too much of what the story was last year. It, it's a new team. It's an, it's a new season. So we're really excited to get started. Awesome. Uh, and then we'll go to Kristen. Okay. So obviously you guys have a talented incoming first year class. What are you, what are you in the group as a whole expecting out of them in order to help the team achieve success this season? Yeah. Like I said, I think the, the biggest part of being a freshman is just being coachable and being open. So, you know, I'm really proud of them and the strides that they've made so far and, and continue to make. So I think just them being, you know, hard workers and, and being coachable is just going to be what, what it takes for that group to continue to develop as it was our group last year. All right. Then the last question, we'll go back to John to finish it out. Obviously, we know there won't be any fans of the games, at least until the end of 2020. But a season for you is still right around the corner, about a week and a half away. What's, is the feeling for upcoming season change this year? Or is it still the uh, excitement and the jitters before that first game tips off? Yeah, we're super excited to get started. It's, you know, it's the same feeling. And um, I think, you know, all you have to focus on is, you know, we, we play soon. So just getting ready, um, doing, you know, everything you know what we need to do to get ready so um it's a, still the same excitement obviously it's under different circumstances but um you know when games hit we'll we'll be ready and we'll be excited to play all right thanks so much for joining us today jordan we really appreciate it thank you guys thank you for having me all right thanks for coming today everyone and we'll uh, we'll be in touch about what's to what's to come in the future here with uh, future media appearances. So it'll be the same thing. I'll, I'll reach out again. All right, thank you, EJ. Thanks, EJ. Thanks, All right, you. everyone, have a good day. You too. Thank you.